Starting in August 2021, I've been using 1 mg oral finasteride and 5% topical minoxidil for 5 months. These are my before pictures. And these are my after pictures. In a previous video, I addressed the difficulties of noticing hair loss in individuals who have 4C hair or curly hair types. This was primarily targeted at those of sub-Saharan African descent, but also I found that it is applicable to groups that have hair types that maintain good coverage in general. And from what I've seen, it's typically curly hair. The reality is this. If you have a hair type that maintains good coverage per square inch on your scalp, it'll take longer for you to realize that you have a hair loss issue than say a person with straight hair with low coverage. For this reason, you must inspect your scalp critically and pay attention to photos from the past and compare them with your current ones. Ask yourself this, does my hair feel different texture-wise? What does it look like when I get out of the shower these days? Do I find it harder to maintain good coverage when I style my hair? How does my hair feel like in the wind? Having hair with good coverage can be a blessing or a curse. A blessing because you don't need to transplant or regrow much hair to cover your scalp compared to a person with low coverage and straight hair, but also could manifest itself as a curse because you may notice hair loss at more aggressive stages than other groups with different low coverage hair types. So in summary, you just need to have a watchful eye when you have curly hair. And if you want to, get haircuts to see where your hairline and where parts of your scalp are underperforming. I attribute my success to taking 1 mg oral finasteride once a day, using 5% topical minoxidil on my scalp at 1 ml once a day, using 5% kinoconazole shampoo twice a week along with castor oil and coconut oil and rosemary oil, and I also microneedled once a week at 1.5 mm with a derma roller. On days I used the microneedle, I used minoxidil. And I don't typically advise this, especially if you're starting out, but I use less about 0.25 milliliters on areas that I roll on with a derma roller. And these are areas I typically would like to see more growth, so at the hairline. And derma rolling may increase minoxidil absorption into the scalp. Symptoms. With finasteride, I haven't had any symptoms or side effects, at least yet. I still have the same sex drive that I had before, and I haven't lost any strength or whatever people typically blame on finasteride. Now keep in mind, I had hormone blood work done before I got the prescription from my dermatologist. So I got my androgen profile. So if anything goes wrong, you know, I have something to reference. By the way, I get a 90 day supply for $12 using GoodRx and also with my dermatologist private code because he has an affiliation with a finasteride distributor, the price is additionally cut down to $8. So I would urge people look for better deals rather than using for hims, Roman, Keeps or some other expensive online pharmacy. Hair loss is a continuous fight which requires funds. You should try to be as economical as possible unless money isn't an issue for you, then I guess, you know, do whatever you want. With the minoxidil, what symptoms did I get from that? I had dry scalp, um, and that has been a major issue from topical minoxidil, at least for me. But I typically remedy this by using oils like olive oil, castor oil, coconut oil, rosemary oil, etc. Um, I use it about an hour after I use minoxidil. I just, you know, massage it into my scalp. I will say one thing. Do not think oils alone will do anything major to combat hair loss. I've seen so many advertisements of people, of these fake companies just selling oil and then it's like, oh, it cured my male pattern baldness. It almost never works. I did not achieve the growth that I got by using oils. I used pharmacological intervention. Oils, however, can make the scalp healthier, but it won't address the main cause of hair loss in men. Androgens, with the main baldness causing male hormone, DHT. DHT is not needed after puberty, and this you can do research on. I'm not going to touch on that in this video. That, that'll make this video far too long and complex, and it has to be. Now with the Kinoconazole shampoo, it tends to dry out my scalp, so I went from using it twice a week to only using it once a week now. And while I'm in the shower, you know, shampooing my hair, I add some coconut oil with the Kinoconazole and massage it in, and I leave it in for typically five minutes as I'm cleaning myself and then, you know, wash it out while I'm in the shower. 
And finally, with microneedling, it made my scalp tender, so I generally apply slight force until I see red areas on my scalp. So this should be a slow process, never rush with a derma roller or with microneedling. That can mess up your scalp a lot, so just be careful and go to, go to a professional if you have to. Don't do it by yourself if you're not really sure on how to do it. So that's pretty much it for this video. There are a lot of people on the internet that spread fear about finasteride. Listen, go talk to a licensed medical professional to see if it's right for you. In most cases, if you have androgenic alopecia, also known as male pattern baldness, you'll be given the choice of getting a finasteride prescription. Now, insurance doesn't always cover the one milligram variant in the United States, so you may have to find other means of reducing this cost. I think without insurance and without any coupons or whatever, for a 30 day supply, it's $90 or something like that? I could be wrong. I've seen it $213 in some cases for a 90 day supply. But you could ask for a 5 milligram version, which is typically given to men with benign prosthetic hyperplasia to help reduce the size of their prostate. And in case you didn't know, DHT causes prostate growth along with hair loss and finasteride prevents the conversion of testosterone to DHT. When you take the 5 milligram finasteride, you can actually cut it up into fifths so you can get 1 milligram. Or you can use coupon codes and find pharmacies with a lower cost. That is pretty much what happened to me. So yeah, these are my pictures and I'll just leave you with the progression. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you on the next video. See you later guys.